Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you'd like any of your Ramadan related questions answered this month, you can email us at questions at amau.org. وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول. The question we're going to answer today is as follows: Is the Sunnah to pray eight rak'at for tarawih or twenty? And the second part of the same question. Is it only virtuous to pray Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala al-mab'uuthi rahmatin lil'alameen nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in So if we deal with the second part of the question, uh, first of all, there is no doubt that praying Qiyamul Layl is virtuous in the whole year. However, the way that you pray it may differ somewhat from the way that you pray it in Ramadan. So let's first of all look at the virtue of praying Qiyamul Layl throughout the whole year. Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ They forsake their sides, they forsake their beds, they don't lie down on their side in their beds, i.e. they get up and they pray at night. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Dhariyat, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَحْجَعُوا It's very little of the night that they sleep. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا In Surah Furqan Those who spend their nights prostrating and standing before Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam رضي الله عنه The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَفْشُ السَّلَامُ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامُ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامُ تَدَخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامُ He said, O oh people Spread the salam and give salam to each other. وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ And feed food. And you feed food to the people who need it. وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامُ And keep ties with your relatives. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ وَالنِّيَامُ And pray at night while the people are sleeping. And you will enter Jannah بِسَلَامُ In safety. And the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه أفضل الصلاة بعد الصلاة المكتوبة الصلاة في جوف الليل The best prayer after the obligatory prayers is the prayer in the middle of the night. And as we said, there are some things that make uh, قيام الليل in Ramadan unique. And one of those is the taraweeh. And in reality, the taraweeh, the taraweeh prayer is the قيام الليل. Uh, there is no difference between the two. However, the taraweeh is prayed in the jama'ah, collectively together. Everybody comes together in the jama'ah to pray taraweeh. And as for the qiyam in the rest of the year, it's not allowed for people to come together like that. Unless it happens occasionally from time to time. We have some examples, like the example of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma praying with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at night. There is an example from Anas radiallahu an, but generally speaking, it wasn't the case that there were organized collective night prayers as a group outside of Ramadan. So the night prayer is the same night prayer that you pray in Ramadan, it's the same uh, format as the taraweeh, except that you don't come together in a group, except if it happens occasionally. Occasionally, if a person is praying at night and someone else comes to join them, then inshallah ta'ala this doesn't harm. But this organized, getting everyone together to pray Qiyamul Layl, this only happens uh, collectively as a group in Ramadan. And that's why it has a unique name, Taraweeh. Otherwise, Taraweeh is not is the Qiyam prayer. It's the Qiyamul Layl, the Tahajjud prayer. And these are all words that are interchangeable. And according to the Salaf, rahimahullah ta'ala, these words were kind of interchangeable. They didn't really distinguish between the two or between the three different words, Qiyam, Tahajjud, or uh, Taraweeh and so on, except that Taraweeh is that unique gathering of people, the organized Qiyam that happens in the month of Ramadan. And as for the time in which it is to be prayed, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray between finishing the Isha prayer, and it's to what people, they called Al-Atama, the prayer in the, in the night time, the Isha prayer, until Fajr. So the time is from Isha until Fajr. 
11 raka'at, he would give salam after every two of them, in two raka'at and salam, two raka'at and salam, two raka'at and salam, and then he would make a witr at the end that was one. And the ways of praying witr are more than that, there are more variations than that. But in this hadith of Aisha, the witr the Prophet ﷺ would pray at the end was, was one. And another way in which our qiyam could be different outside of Ramadan is that we, it's not allowed for us outside of Ramadan to regularly pray the whole night. As for the last 10 nights of Ramadan, it might be the case that we tried or we aimed to pray the whole night. As for outside of Ramadan and outside of the last 10 days, what is after Ramadan in the regular days of the year, then it's not allowed for us, or it's not from the sunnah, for us to intend to pray the whole night on a regular basis. And this is something which is mentioned by some of the scholars from the Maliki and the Shafi'iyah and the Hanabila, and all of them, they, they mentioned this particular point. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he used to get up and he used to go to sleep and he criticized the one who said, Usalli wala anam, that I'm going to pray all of the night and I'm not going to sleep. As for the last 10 nights, the Prophet ﷺ, Ahya, al-layl, he made the night alive. And in other words, he, he stayed up the whole night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So that's another case where we could be slightly different outside of the rest of the year. As for the number of raka'at, then we're going to start with the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. مَا كَانَ يَزِيدُ فِي رَمَضَانْ وَلَا فِي غَيْرِهِ عَلَىٰ إِحْتَى عَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةً the Prophet ﷺ never increased in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan more than 11 raka'at. This number 11, uh, the scholars differed as to how to count that 11. But broadly speaking, we're talking about 8 raka'at of Qiyam, either with the 2 raka'at of Isha and the Witr, or 8 raka'at of Qiyam and then the Shafa and the Witr, the 2 and the 1 that makes the Witr up, uh, or the... Eight of Qiyam followed by the three of Witr prayed together. Ultimately, what it broadly speaking, what it means is the eight raka'at of Qiyam. Ay tahajjud, Qiyam al-layl, or taraweeh. The Prophet ﷺ inside of Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, he never went over 11 raka'at in other narrations. It mentions 13 and there are other numbers that are mentioned there. And the scholars, when they look at that, broadly speaking, many of them, what they did is they said, well, this includes the Sunnah of Isha, this includes the Witr, and so on. But broadly speaking, we're talking about the eight raka'at of Qiyam al-Layl, or Tahajjud, or Taraweeh. The Prophet ﷺ, he didn't go over that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here comes the question. We as Muslims are commanded to understand the Sunnah in the light of the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih the understanding of the righteous predecessors from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and those who followed them in good. That's how we understand the Sunnah. So really here, when you hear very, very strong debates and very, um, you know, very sometimes harsh words on this mas'ala of whether we should pray eight raka'at or 20 raka'at, I don't think the, the discussion really is necessarily what the Prophet ﷺ himself did. But the question is, is the action of the Prophet ﷺ here, is it the case that this is an indication to us that it is prohibited to go beyond that? Or is it an indication to us that Qiyam layl has a fixed number of eight raka'at or how you 11, 13, how you want to consider it? Is that the case? Is that how the Sahaba understood it? Did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum understand that the Prophet وسلم, did never ever wanted them to pray more than that? Is that the case or not? And that's what you really have to ask yourself because if we differ in our understanding of the Sunnah, we look to those people who understood the Sunnah better than we did. And Imam Ibn Abdul Bar rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَا عَلَىٰ أَنَّ لَا حَدَّ وَلَا شَيْءَ مقدرا في صلاة الليل وأنها نافلة فمن شاء أطال فيها القيام وقلت, الرك... وقلت ركعاته ومن شاء أكثر الركوع والسجود He said that the scholars have consensus that there is no limit 
nor is there any particular amount for the number of raka'at that you pray at night and that it is voluntary. So whoever, and they differed about whether it is obligatory for the Prophet ﷺ, but that it is voluntary for the Muslims. So whoever wishes to lengthen their standing and pray fewer raka'at, they can do so. And whoever wishes to pray more ruku' and sujood, pray more raka'at, then they can do so. And the same ijma' was narrated by Al-Qadi Iyad, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, لا خلافة أنه ليس في ذلك حد لا يزاد عليه ولا ينقص منه وأن الصلاة, وأن صلاة الليل من الفضائل والرغائب التي كلما زيد فيها زيد في الأجر والفضل وإنما الخلاف في فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإنما الخلاف في فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وما اختاره لنفسه Qadi Iyadi said there is no difference of opinion that there is no limit which you can't go over or you can't go under with regard to the night prayer and that the night prayer is from the virtuous acts and the things that are you know, there is, they, they are encouraged to do that whatever you pray more of it you get more reward and more virtue and the difference among the scholars is in what the Prophet wasallam himself did and what he chose for himself to do and likewise Imam Al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala when he mentioned the hadith of Abi Dhar regarding the Taraweeh he said Qala Abu Isa Hada hadithun hasanun sahih واختلف أهل العلم في القيام He said, this is a hadith which is hasan sahih It is an authentic and a good hadith And he said the scholars differed about the qiyam The number of raka'at And he mentioned opinion after opinion about the raka'at And the most strange thing is That Imam al-Tirmidhi never mentioned praying eight raka'at as an opinion at all He didn't mention it and that shows you that this idea, even though we say maybe he made an ishara towards it because he mentioned Wafil Babi and Aisha and so on, that Aisha has a hadith about it and so on, but he didn't mention among the opinions of the scholars anyone who held the opinion that you must pray eight raka'at. So we say the Prophet wasallam prayed eight raka'at. That's what he chose for himself. That's what he chose for himself. And if you want to choose what he chose for himself, and like, and like Ibn Abdul Bar said, you want to lengthen your qiyam, you want to make your qiyam long, so that you, you know, you, you get a good portion of the night, then Alhamdulillah, you've made an excellent choice. And if you feel that you want to pray a few more raka'at, you want to instead, instead of standing for a long time, you want to make more ruku' and sujood, then there is no harm in that. And from this also is that sometimes the imam in your local masjid might pray eight raka'at, but you want to go and pray more. You want to go and make some voluntary prayers, extra prayers in the night time. So there is no haraj in this, inshaAllah ta'ala. There is no harm in it and nothing to worry about, inshaAllah ta'ala. The Prophet Sallallahu prayed eight raka'at from what we can see from the different narrations, inshaAllah. And that's what we would, you know, initially recommend to people to do. But if somebody wishes to pray more than that, then there is no haraj, inshallah ta'ala. And the issue is, well, amru fihi sa'ah. The issue has a degree of ease in it and a degree of flexibility in it. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.